Hello and welcome to my review of this affordable meter from Surecom. This is a power SWR meter. Uh, very nice little unit and a complete night and day to the uh, repeater controller that I tested last week on the channel. Um, this unit is the new version, uh, version 2.06. It has some features in software that the uh, older versions didn't have. Um, it fundamentally um, has a, a feature now where it automatically holds so when you key up uh, you can unkey and have your display and your data on the screen uh, whereas the others didn't do that I believe. It's got a battery, uh, it's an internal battery, it's easily charged. Um, there's a way that you can tell which version that you have looking at the little screw, the little ground connection proves it's the newer version. I don't believe they can be software upgraded which is a shame um, uh, but I, I believe that's at the moment that's the way it is. Um, the unit is powered on just by pushing and holding down the red power on button and the software version is indicated there by the little red arrow. Um, the unit comes in at between 40 and 50 pounds online, you can pick it up from Amazon or the Chinese marketplace. It comes supplied with a USB adapter and a little USB lead. Uh, the N-Type connector is making this unit much more suitable for use on power UHF testing, uh, which we will find out all about later on. It comes um, with some PL259 adapters there for VHF testing, um, which is a useful feature. So pushing and holding brings the unit up. As you can see, it's a nice clear and nicely backlit display. Um, I found this quite easy to read in my eyes, so it's not exactly brilliant. Um, you have uh, options in the menu here for adjusting the length of time that the light stays on on the front of the screen and how long the unit stays until it powers off. Now the values there are in seconds it's showing but they are actually in minutes on the unit itself so that's obviously just a little typo in the software there. But it's fairly easy to navigate, there's not a great deal that you can do in this sub menu other than change the light off time setting and the power off time setting of the unit. I actually set these up to a maximum of, of 9 minutes, it seems to run for quite a good while on the battery and of course you can operate the unit whilst it's charging anyway so it's not a major problem. I mean it's very very easy to uh, to navigate, like I say it's, there's nothing really in here that's going to flummox anyone and you could get this unit calibrated you know, properly if you wanted to but the costs involved in doing that, getting, getting it sent off to a lab that will actually work with this uh, are probably not worth it. So let's um, screw on the adapters here and we'll do a little bit of testing and see how we get on with the Surecom SW102. Right we're on the uh, Surecom power meter now. Okay, and we're on the low power setting. The low power setting. Okay, so that's showing us 4.2 watts. Okay, that's 145.525, the frequency spot on, 4.2 watts. That seems to tie in with what we had before. Okay, let's uh, pop the power up to mid 2. This is VHF testing, mid two power, that's uh, 8.7 watts, mid two, okay. so we are almost of one to one, okay, 8.6 watts there, okay now we go to mid one, that's 17 watts, 17.2 watts, Then this is high power VHF, 44.7 watts, 45 watts. I reckon that's pretty reasonable actually. All right, let's go over to UHF. Okay, so this is UHF, there's the low power. This is UHF low power. So it's got a frequency 433, that's pretty, pretty close, 3.4 watts. Okay, we're now on mid power one. That's 7.2 watts. Mid power, sorry, one was before. This is mid power one, 14.1 watts. And then for high power, this is high in two. High, this is high power. So high power UHF, 25.4 watts. Okay. We'll look at how they compare in a minute. Right, we're on VHF now, and we've got the dummy load in the back of the um, the Avar meter, the newer meter. 
and um, we're on VHF this is low power test low power test so that's just shy of 5 watts just shy of 5 watts let's say 4.5 watts okay and um, we're going to go up to mid power 2 on VHF that's mid power 2 on VHF that's 10 watts these are matching it's more or less 10 watts these are matching the figures in the book for this radio let's go to mid power one so we're gonna to have to put it up onto the yeah onto the 200 watt scale right the 200 watt scale mid power one so we're on this scale up here 200 watts okay so that's 20 in fact, we could probably look at that on the 20 watt scale. Come on, let's put it back down to the 20 watt scale. Just bang on 20 watts. So that's 20 watts. 20 watts on uh, on that one, and then on the high power. This is high power VHF. We are going to have to go up to 200 watts for this. So we're on the 200 watt scale, the top scale there. That's just shy of 50 watts. Just shy of 50 watts. Okay, we'll, we'll put on the we'll calibrate the SWR at 50 watts, just to show you that we're into a 50 ohm load here. So there's a little bit reflected at 50 watts. Right, we've got the UV8000E claim 10 watt radio. Oh, very good radio actually, by the way. Love this. Um, connected up via patch lead. This is as good as I could do with my limited range of connectors. <laughs> okay, so we've put an antenna on the output side and let's have a little play and see how it... I mean the SWR is going to be all over the place with it like that, but let's just see how it affects the, uh, the output power. Let's try it. Alright, this is UHF test on full power. Okay, 7.5 watts, and then VHF test. 16. Hang on. 17. 18. VHF test, full power. 7.7 7 watts. Okay. I did eight basic power tests on each radio and on both meters. I used a UV5R, a Kason UV68D, a Yasu 8900R, TYT UV8000E, ICOM ICE92, and the Anytone 88778UV to get a nice mix of low and high end radios, all with varying levels of power, with the ICE92 able to output super low power of just 0.1 watts, so we can test the sensitivity of both meters. The chart will be available in Excel and PDF format for anyone to have a look at and, the proce and process the data as they want to. A few things are fairly obvious from the initial view but it's not quite as cut and dried as it looks. Um, these will be available at links in the description. The tests were VHF and UHF high and low power. Intermediate powers were checked but not part of the data set because only a few radios offer intermediate power levels. A 50 watt PL259 dummy load was plugged directly into the antenna socket of each power meter and a good quality patch lead was used from the radio to the power meter. SWR into the load was close to 1.1. The first thing to notice is that the results are much closer and much more accurate on VHF. The accuracy of the AVAIR meter is 5% on 5 watts, 7.5% on 20 watts, 10% on 200 watts and 12.5% on 400 watts, according to the manufacturer. It's also worth noting that many of the more affordable meters are not as accurate on UHF or with DMR radios. The Surecom Digital claiming to not even be suitable for use on DMR. The test results on VHF at low power between the two meters were very close and the results matched the manufacturer's claims for the radios very closely. The 8900R with its 5 watt power level and 50 watt high power VHF rating being on the needle absolutely spot on with the analog meter and not too far off with the digital one. The super low output of the ICOM on VHF and UHF was detected very well by the digital meter, as you would expect, and not handled quite as well by the analog meter. 
As a general trend, you will see on the values in the chart that the digital meter consistently read higher power values against the analog meter on UHF. There is an adjustment inside the meter in the menu calibration, uh, however it could only really be done by sending away to a lab which would cost more than both of these meters are worth put together. What might look alarming is the UHF high power tests. The wide margin between the actual power values read and the manufacturer's claim values is only of concern for the 8900R Yaesu radio. These results actually show that the radio itself must be down on power on UHF. The Anytone manual doesn't quote the UHF power value separately, so the general 25 watt high power value was used as the reference. However, it is very likely that this radio will output much less on UHF. The manufacturer will always quote the VHF power values for a dual band radio and not the UHF ones because they will always be higher and Watts does sell radios. We all fall for that one, don't we? SWR readings from both meters match quite well and when testing the antenna and the frequency of readout of the digital meter was spot on accurate at all power levels and on all frequencies. I think the real and accurate readings probably lie somewhere between the two meters. I think for handhelds the digital meter with its super accurate low power reading ability and its frequency counter built in might fare better and the analog meter might be better for higher power radios. Both are good budget meters. The Shorecom digital meter can be picked up for 40 to 50 pounds and the Avair for about 70 pounds or so. So in summary, I can thoroughly recommend the Shorecom digital meter here. It's a really well made product in comparison to the repeater uh, unit that I tested in the last video. If you haven't seen that, go and uh, click on that video and have a little look. These products are night and day in comparison. Uh, to the point where it must have been a completely separate team of people that worked on this because it is by far a superior product to that. So all in all I can really recommend this power meter. Some of the early power meters that I tried uh, from China weren't that great. This is certainly a big step in the right direction and I, uh, I really recommend it. Right we're going to interrupt the video here because I had a bit of an epiphany. Um, I didn't believe that the uh, 8900R radio is going to have a problem on UHF and I started to wonder whether the PL259s who are not rated to operate above 300 megahertz might start to be being the problem when I'm trying to test high power UHF on, on this test. So I bought a dummy load with a n-type mail connector which obviously is rated for much much higher up to many gigahertz and I bought some extra interconnect so I could interconnect so I could try and eliminate the use of PL259s when testing high power UHF um, and I was hopefully hoping that this would make a big difference to the results I was getting. VHF didn't seem to be an issue it was just UHF and um, we're all guilty of doing it uh, of using um, PL259s on UHF and you can get away with it for the most part on low power um, but there's clearly um, line attenuation issues when you start going up in power uh, and using PL259s on UHF and it's certainly not something that um, I would having seen the results I was getting now rec recommend anyone does certainly not and um, so I, I plugged in the 8900R straight into the back of the radio eliminating any um, patch leads or, or, or any pro pro problems with any kind of line attenuation and connected straight up and boom 34.4 watts there straight off the bat um, the output power on UHF um, was much, much lower uh, uh, when I was going through the PL259 connections and um, this was much more like it uh, using just the straight end connector. So it does show you that definitely um, using the proper rated connectors, particularly on UHF, is definitely something that we, we should all uh, should definitely do because that made such a huge difference. Now. Having that said that, I thought I would check it on the lower power, so I switched it down, and again, this was much more accurate. We were back down to, near, we're on the five watt setting here, and we were much closer to the actual setting at 4.57 watts. Well, that wasn't that far off on the last test. So I connected up all of the radios again, and redid all of the tests again, using the new dummy load and the new setup. And on VHF the results were quite similar, a little bit closer, but particularly on UHF high power, 
the results came in to be much more in line with the manufacturer's um, ratings for the equipment and also you know between the analog and the digital meters although I think the analog meter still did suffer a little bit uh, because there's a PL259 connection on the meter so I think that is uh, w why um, the power meter manufacturers or manufacturers of anything now are, are releasing stuff with PL259 and UHF capabilities is a little bit beyond me so if you do see it call manufacturers out on it because I think this experiment has at least proven to me that PL259 is, isn't good for UHF high power use so Anyway, I'm going to wrap this video up. I think that's been uh, quite a video. It took me quite a while to do this. I've re-edited the chart and uh, the, the, the actual version 2 of the chart will now be in, in the link in the description for this video. And you can click on it and go and have a little play around and see what you think. Anyway, I'm going to leave that there. If you have taken the time to watch all of this video, I really thank you. If you've liked the content on today's video, please let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't liked it, let me know why. Okay, I'm going to go now. I think I need to lie down. Thanks ever so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.